this video, we're going to be having a look at the various factors that impact the current account deficit and how to calculate the current account deficit. Before we get into that, I just wanted to go through a couple of answers from some of the questions in your workbooks. The first one, define what is meant by the balance of payments account. As I keep saying, that balance of payment is an annual record of financial transactions between Australia and the rest of the world. So it's annual record of the transactions between Australia and the rest of the world. It records all money coming into the country as a credit and records all money coming out of the country as a debit, either in either the current or capital account. The current account is financed by the capital and financial account, and they are always in balance. So one, it records all transactions between Australia and the rest of the world. Money coming in is credits, money coming out is debits, and it's the current account is financed by the capital and financial account. The current account records the value of all money coming into and out of Australia for transactions that have no future obligation. This includes all exports of goods and services and income transactions. What I mean by income transactions are things like um, interest and dividends and rents and profits. They're all income transactions. So it includes all exports and imports and all income transactions. Um, how is the current ca account balance calculated? It's calculated by deducting the debits, money coming out of the country for current transactions, from credits, money coming into the country. Across four different sub-accounts, the balance of merchandise trade, net services, primary income, and secondary income. So we're recording all money coming in as credits, minus all money coming out as debits for all current transactions with no future obligation across those four sub-accounts. BOMT, net services, net primary income, and net secondary income. To calculate the current account balance, you add up so credits minus debits in each sub-account. So this sub-account has had more credits than debits, so it's in surplus. And we have three accounts that are in deficit, giving us an overall deficit of $25 billion. This would mean the current capital and financial account together are in surplus by $25 billion because they balance out. Um, again, you're adding up the total of credits minus debits for all of these sub-accounts. Net goods, net services, net primary income and net secondary income to get your balance on current accounts. So if you look at this transaction here, it's asking you what the value of net primary and secondary income is. So in this case here, you know you've got a capital and financial account surplus of 1,150, and therefore we know that the current account deficit needs to be minus 1,150, because they are always in balance. So again, you've got credits for goods of 700 and debits for goods of 600, which means that the balance of merchandise trade has a positive or a surplus of 100, because credits exceed debits by 100. We know net services is minus 300, so together, the balance of trade, the first two accounts, have a deficit of minus 200 billion. We know that the current account deficit has to be minus 1,150 billion. So therefore, the net primary income is the difference, which is another minus 950. So we've got the, the adding these three figures up, we get minus 200 for the first two accounts. Add another negative 950 to get your 11 minus 1150 for the current account, which balances up to the 1150 in the capital and financial account. The correct answer is C. The two main reasons countries around the world have current account surpluses are because they are either exporting a higher value than they're importing. So a lot of these countries here are all major oil exporters and therefore they've got a lot more money coming in from oil than they do coming out from other imports. And the other reason is that a lot of these countries are net lenders. Australia is a net borrower, but a lot of these countries are net lenders, which means they have a lot of interest flowing into their net primary income account. So they're either exporting more than they're importing as a general rule in terms of the value. Don't say volume, it's always value. And or they're a net lender, so money's coming in from foreign interest. Um, the current account deficit, so the Australia runs a current account deficit. This essentially measures the value of net leakages from our economy. The difference between what we're earning as a country and what we're spending as a country. So it shows that as a percentage of Australia's GDP that is leaked from our country to other nations. In Australia, we've run a deficit in this account since 1973, and that means that Australia has consistently been spending more than we earn. We are a borrower nation and have to consistently fund that current account deficit by borrowing from overseas, um, and therefore our debt is continually accumulated. When we're expressing our current account deficit, we can express it in dollar terms, so we can say we have a current account deficit of $25 billion. Um, which effectively means that as a nation, we are spending $25 billion more than we are earning. Or we can express it as a percentage. So the CAD is currently around negative 2.9% of GDP, means that we're spending more than we're earning at equivalent to around 
2.9% of our GDP. So our CAD might be 29 billion. If our total GDP is a trillion, that's around 2.9% of our GDP. So if you're looking at the current account balance, you can see here that Australia's trade balance is sometimes positive, which means the total value of exports for goods and services exceeds the value of imports, but generally it's negative. And the second section, the net income section, the blue line is always, sorry, the green line is always negative because of the amount of interest on our foreign debt, and therefore our current account balance is always negative. So even when we run a surplus on the balance of trade, we still run a current account deficit because of the large deficits in the other two sub-accounts. The balance of trade is only two or four sub-accounts. Um, again, you can see here that the current account balance has started to trend upwards, or the deficit has started to increase in the last year. So this is a question from last year's exam. It says, referring to the graph above, outline one factor that might explain the trend in Australia's current account balance from 2015, middle of 2015 to the middle of 2017. So we're really looking at this period in here, which is showing a decrease in the current account deficit. So first things first, you need to say what's happening. You need to say it's a decrease in the current account deficit. We're below zero, so it's a deficit, and that amount is decreasing because it's gone from around negative 5.8% to around negative 1.8%. And then explain a factor that may have caused this. So the graph indicates that the current account balance has improved. You can say it's improved, but you can't say that it's, um, the current account balance has gone down because that doesn't mean anything. It's improved, the deficit has fallen from around 6% of gross domestic product to just below 1% of GDP. This is likely to be caused by an improvement in the terms of trade. So what that means is that we're getting a higher price for our commodity exports. Um, when the terms of trade improves, it means that over the course of 2017, we're selling our exports on average at a higher price. Therefore, because they're quite an inelastic demand, we generate a higher value for our exports when we sell them at a higher price. Export credits are recorded in the balance of trade are likely to increase. Credits in the balance of trade are likely to go up um, and therefore likely to reduce the balance of trade deficit and re decrease the current account deficit, as shown in the graph reducing from 0.6% to around 1% of GDP. Can Australia run a balance of trade surplus and still run a current account deficit? So what's it basically saying is, can we run a surplus in the first two accounts combined but still run a current account deficit? If you get given that question, you need to explain it. So Australia often runs a current balance of trade surplus because the total value of our exports can exceed the value of our imports for goods and services. So for goods and services, we sometimes have more credits than debits. However, the balance of merchandise trade and net services are only two sections of the current account. The main reason for Australia's current account is because of our high level of net foreign debt. This requires servicing through interest repayments, so it's just the interest that affects the current account, which is a debit in the primary income account, and therefore we're paying billions of dollars every year in interest, which is giving us a big deficit in our net primary income and net secondary income. So even though we run a balance of trade because the value of exports for goods and services exceeds the value of imports, Overall, we're still running a current account deficit because of the net primary and net secondary income accounts. Why does an increase in GDP have a negative impact on the current account? Because GDP or economic growth is generally associated with increased spending, and a lot of that is import spending. Because we have higher incomes when we're in a peak or growth growing strongly, that leads to more spending on foreign goods and services. This causes debits in both the balance of merchandise trade and net services accounts, so we might go on foreign holidays, for example and that puts us further into deficit. Explain why an increase in the unemployment rate might affect the balance of trade. So the unemployment rate goes up. Why might that be good or bad for the balance of trade? An increase in unemployment can actually have favourable effects for the balance of trade, and that's because it should reduce import spending. As more people are relying on transfer as opposed to factor income, they have less money to spend on imports. It also keeps wages down and keeps inflation down, which makes us more internationally competitive because of lower costs of production. So the higher the unemployment, generally the lower current account deficit because we don't spend as much on imports. Thank you.